All right, so as if to underscore the obvious, I was watching a Twitter thread last week. I got tagged into it, actually, by my friend Travis. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. <laughs> Greg, here's the dumbest conversation on Twitter that I found in a month. Well, why don't you join? No, uh, thank you. Thanks, thanks for keeping me in the game, Travis. <laughs> so I got tagged into the conversation. It was with Godless Liz originally, and then three or four guys. I'm not going to name names. I only named Godless Liz. And Godless Liz, if you're listening, you know, she's done me no wrong, so I'm not trying to diss her too hard. I only, I only just people who disrespect me personally. That's it. Godless Liz, I'll, I'll diss a little. Why? Because, you know, just for fun. But none of the other guys in the, the thread I'm going to name personally. Why? Because they've done me no personal wrong. You're cool with me. I'm cool with you right back. But he tags me into this thread and I looked, you know, it starts off, she started it off with likening God believed to Santa Claus. Okay, yeah. And then, you know, it starts this whole 2,000 tweet, all, all forces weighing in. It's right there starting as one of the dumbest conversations. Just, I, I read the conversation, okay? And the only person I'll mention by name is Stephen Tiger. And Stephen Tiger I actually like. I think he's a gentleman. I was in a debate with him. I like him. He's a nice guy. His take on Christianity is really dumb. The, 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 the back and forth between Travis and a couple of Christians and some of these atheists, was one of the dumbest things I've ever read in my life. From the atheists. Their take on Christianity was so imbecilic and so poorly thought out and so, like, inane that I didn't, to call it straw man in Christianity would have been, like, too charitable. <laughs> I swear to God, it would have been too charitable. To call it straw man in Christianity would have been too charitable. So I didn't bother joining the conversation. Why? Because it was one of the stupidest conversations I'd seen. And I just <laughs> was like, I don't really want to go even get involved. I don't even know where to begin. Why? Because the, the misrepresentations, the straw manning, the stupid assertions are just off the charts. Now, that's fine. It's Twitter. Not expecting it to all be highbrow, <laughs> philosophical, you know, <laughs> levels of engagement. But here's the part that's really, really just untenable for the long term. This is the part that I'm telling you that cannot last. Why? Because it's too ironic. It's Twitter. I'm sure there were 500 conversations that day that were too stupid for me to even bother engaging with, right? You know? Except in this particular conversation, the guys making the really, really bad, dumb, lack of critical thinking, the really, really bad, dumb, inane, imbecilic takes, when the whole thing was over, are high-fiving themselves, walking away from this discussion, high-fiving themselves in the discussion itself, that they're the smart set. They're the great critical thinkers and they're the smart ones. That's the dichotomy that can't last. Why? Because it's just too ironic. There are a lot of imbecile takes out there in Twitter land. I'm sure there are a lot of clicks that you could interact with that ain't all that bright. <laughs> I haven't interacted with metalheads on Twitter, but I guarantee you they ain't the sharpest tools in the shed. My experience, experience within the real world was that they weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. But they aren't high-fiving themselves about their critical thinking skills and how smart they are and how well, well they master the topics and then displaying pure ignorance and inanity at the same time. That's the part that's embarrassing and needs to change. And it's not me who's going to change it. Why? Because it's embarrassing to other atheists. That's the part that's going to make the difference. Why? Because there are a lot of other atheists out there, philosophical atheists, who are starting to square off against these guys all the freaking time. They even got involved in this thread. It started out with an entity, you know, comparing God belief to Santa Claus, which isn't the road to a positive, to a productive conversation right there, okay? I don't even think you need to argue with some of them. I'm not defensive about Christianity, guys. If you're a Christian who's defensive about Christianity, don't be. Why? Because that's imbecile land. You don't gain anything by participating in stupid conversations about Christianity. You really don't. There's almost no reason to do it. Say a couple of things here and there, object a little, then move on. Why? Because it's not worth it. I didn't get involved in the conversation. Why? Because there was no angle for me to jump in and have a real conversation. At all. Zero. Which is fine. As I said, there's probably a thousand stupid conversations going on on Twitter right now. Except the people involved in those conversations don't end them and high-five themselves and pat themselves on the back for being the great critical thinkers and the smart set. That's the ironic part. That's the part that is going to change. Why? Because it's just too paradoxical. The paradigmatic example of that type of atheist is Aaron Ra. And his take on Christianity is stupid. 
I didn't say he's a sinner in need of grace. I didn't say he just wants to sin. I said he was never a real Christian. I didn't say anything like that. I said his take on Christianity is just plain dumb. Now, Godless Liz is the only one who I will criticize by name, and I apologize, Liz, you've done me no wrong, but, you know, I apologize. <laughs> you've done me no wrong. I got no, no, you know, no dog in the fight against her. I just, the, uh, with her, she's the perfect paradigmatic example. She'll be my go-to person, probably. Why? Because she's obviously smart enough to know better. She's obviously an intelligent enough person to have a real nuance and intelligent take on Christianity. She just doesn't want to. She's having fun right now, and she's kind of smart alecky, and I, I get it. I get what the popularity is. She's somewhat similar to um, Atheist Girl. Who I got a kick out of. I used to read Atheist Girl's tweets all the time. Watch, they're entertaining. Same idea. Liz has obviously got something upstairs. She's good at clever comebacks. She'd be, and that's part of why her tweets are popular and why her thread is so popular. She doesn't want to have a nuanced take on Christianity. Her prerogative. But then don't try to pan yourself off as the critical thinker in the smart set. Why? Because that's just too paradoxical and ironic. She's a smart aleck, <laughs> and a good one, and she's a smart aleck, and a good one, <laughs> actually, did talented smart out. Talented provocateur, for sure. They ate this girl is a little bit better. I thought ate this girl genuinely cracked me up sometimes. I, I haven't read ate this girl in a long time, but I used to read ate this girl tweets just for fun, just to watch her interact with people. Why? Because it was hilarious. She'd say really trippy out there things, and she'd be really innovative in her put downs, and her <laughs> tone was really entertaining. God, Godless Liz probably can reach those heights, but she doesn't seem to reach them as, you know, as, as easily. But the point is, her main, the reason why that type of atheism is not going to last is because it is just too paradoxical. The people who followed in her wake and were debating Travis were just pure idiots. They weren't kind of talented, they weren't kind of fun, they weren't, like, kind of interesting, they're just imbeciles, period. No redeeming qualities whatsoever. We're not going to name their names because they did me no wrong. But they were just a pack of idiots, period. End of discussion. <laughs> okay, nothing more to talk about. They are starting to bother the philosophical atheist. I won't name his name, everyone will know who I'm talking about. His initials are E.M. Why am I not going to name his name? Because he already gets too much blowback for being a quote-unquote closet Christian. Some people probably think he's me. <laughs> it's my, my sock account. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, actually. Um, I did start an atheist sock account, but I never got off the ground. I was I was gonna do that too. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna like praise Craig Reed videos as an atheist. Craig Reed guy's really smart, and I started with that intention to like secretly praise all my videos. I go, I really think Craig Reed is like one of the cool like, Christians, but I never, you know, I, I retweeted a couple of things, never really got it, got it going. Had a couple of chats with atheists here and there, and then just let it go. Um, so, his initials are EM. If you pay attention to the space, you know who I'm talking about. But he gets blowback for being a closet Christian because he's embarrassed. Okay? The philosophical atheists are embarrassed by these painfully bad takes on Christianity. That's the thing that's going to do in the debate bros. Why? Because the smart set is paying attention and they're getting sick of being associated with you. Why? Because it's embarrassing to them. They have actual integrity. They care what's true. They care about the philosophical arguments. Once you start paying close attention to some of these questions, okay, they don't resolve so easily in favor of not God. And actually, the whole Santa Claus argument underscores the obvious. Why? It doesn't resolve that easily in favor of not God. And the dichotomy is right there. The same people who are saying God is like Santa Claus are the same ones who are passionately defending all atheism means is a lack of belief in God. Isn't that ironic? Why? Because they're pretending. They are pretending. Oh, God is just like Santa Claus. It's that obvious that God doesn't exist. But I refuse to adopt any burden of proof. <laughs> and then they'll say really dichotomous things. Atheism doesn't make any claims. You know, we, we only claim that there's no good evidence for God. Atheism doesn't make any claims. Our claim is there's no good evidence for God. In the same tweet. I, I've seen that tweet. I've seen that exact tweet. So, like, the, the, the take on it, 
was by an atheist. And I liked, I, I, I don't even remember who it is, the purple guy. <laughs> he hangs out with uh, E.M. and Philip Mueller and uh, all those other guys. The purple guy. He said, in this last week, I learned that, you know, I saw the atheist community say, God, liking God believed to Santa Claus, and then say, oh God, I forget what his exact tweet was, but it was perfect. And he's like, and these same people, these same people tell us in that same thread that they're so much smarter than Christians. That's really the point. Anybody with intellectual integrity is going to start calling out, and they're already starting to do it en masse. It's starting to happen as a trickle, but that trickle will soon turn into a flood. Why? Because it's too obviously dense. That's the point. You can have bad takes on things until you're blue in the face, but you can't have bad takes on things, really painfully ignorant and bad takes on things, and then high-five yourself as the smart set. Why? Because that's just too ironic. Eventually, your own tribe is going to go, you guys got to cut it out. Why? Because this is just ludicrous. Now, Liz will get away with it for a while. Like I said, she's charming and kind of fun. And she's smart. She's clever. She's making fun, you know. Look at one of the people, for example, uh, Tim, History for Atheists. I think he's even squared off against Godless Liz, correct? Pretty sure he has. Okay, he's a perfect example. The, the perfect example of the bad, the most paradigmatic example I can think of an imbecile take is, is comes when it comes to history. There are atheists out there, keep in mind, these are the people who pan themselves off as the critical thinkers and the smart set, who will tell you with a straight face, Adolf Hitler was a Christian, everybody knows that. And you're like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's this everybody that knows that? And they'll go, here, exhibit A. And they've got like three core pieces of evidence and nothing else. God mitons is written on the belt buckle up to, up to Fairmont. Okay, wow, that's a powerful piece of evidence. You got me, yeah, so was a Christian army. That's how, yeah, that's how fact-finding works. You find one piece of evidence, and therefore it's fact. That's what they say. It said God mitons on their belt buckles of the Wehrmacht. Therefore, it was a Christian army. <laughs> Swear to God. It's, 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 I'm not strong any atheist, guys. If you, if you were an atheist, listen to that. Do, do not point your finger at me. I'm just a messenger. I've heard that exact take, I promise. I know not, I'm not accusing every atheist of having that painfully stupid ignorant takes on history, but I've heard that exact take. That exact take. And then I've heard that same person turn around and say, you know, what great critical thinking skills he has. <laughs> I swear to God. And I swear to God I've heard some, a lot of atheists say this. You know, I'm not trying, if you're an atheist, listen to them, not saying that all of you believe this or will say something that's stupid. I'm just saying that I've heard a lot of atheists say this, okay? I've been pointing out the whole time, there are really smart set atheists. And they're the ones who are going to get rid of the debate me bows before I have anything to do with it. Why? Because they're getting embarrassed. It's too painfully obvious to them. Why? Because they have actual inter intellectual integrity and they're actually trying to study these topics for real. And they don't want to be dragged into the sewer with this type of imbecility. They're going, to, they're going to win. There's no other way this ends but victory for them. They're going to be the only ones left standing. Why? Because the dichotomy is too obvious, guys. So here's the other painfully, embarrassingly stupid take that I've heard actual atheists make. Again, if you're an atheist, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not saying you personally listen have said this. Hitler is a Christian. How do you know that? Well, in these three speeches, he's clearly referenced God and his belief in God. By that same idiot logic, Barack Obama is a conservative. <laughs> Why? Because every once in a while, you'll hear him give lip service to, Christian, to conservatism principles in a speech. Hitler was a politician, guys, in a deeply Christian nation. Yes, every once in a while, you will find him make references to God, maybe even Jesus, in a speech. He's a politician. Did I mention that part? So politicians automatically say what's completely true and corresponds to their deeply held belief, right? That's the logic of that. By that same idiot logic, again, I'm not saying that a lot of atheists argue this, but I've seen these arguments out there. They're pretty common. By that same idiot logic, Barack Obama is a conservative. Why? Because I've heard Barack Obama say from his own mouth in speeches, give lip service to conservative ideology. I've heard him. I've heard him. 
Therefore, he's a conservative. Greg, why is he saying, why is he saying yeah, he's a conservative? Actually, there are atheists. There are people listening who think he is a conservative, but that's another story altogether. Because he's, you know, he's too centrist for them. I swear to God, there are. But anyways, so you have somebody like Tim O'Neill comes along, History for Atheists, which is a corrective for that type of imbecile thinking. Why? Because he he gets embarrassed. He isn't embarrassed that you, that there's ignorant takes in atheist land. I think he's more embarrassed that there are these really ignorant takes, and then these guys pawn themselves off as the smart set. That's the part that's painful. A lot of stupid people out there on Twitter. Not a lot of stupid people high-fiving themselves for being great critical thinkers. That's the really obvious difference. Atheists in general are a notch above most other groups in intelligence. I'll give them that. You know, when the, the, that, that was another debate that raged this week. I actually think that atheists are, in general, smarter than Christians. As a given. Yeah, that's obvious, but it's a self-selected group. It, they should be smarter than Christians. Christians are just sort of the mean, the average, any old person. It's still, it's still most people in the United States are Christian. So if you're talking in the United States, in Europe it's probably different, but Christianity just means the average person. So yeah, an atheist is a self-selected group. Self -selected group. They, I would expect them to trend a little smarter than just the average Joe. Because they chose themselves on purpose, and some of that was based on critical thinking and for being more philosophical than most people and wanting to think more about things. So that's why I always thought I'd get along with atheists. I was not expecting them to be ideologues. That's the part that really threw me. I wasn't expecting them to be team players at all. I wasn't. It struck me as really weird. Why? Because you chose yourself to be an It's just a belief system. You'll be the first person to tell me that. That it's just a belief. And yet a lot of these people play teams. They're dogmatic ideologues can, can, you know, playing for atheism as a general team. And that's a really bizarre anomaly. And that anomaly ain't going to last all that long. Why? Because it's just too ironic. That's the point. It's just too ironic. So you have somebody like Tim O'Neill, History for Atheists, shows up. And he's trying to correct the general trend of ignorance in the atheist community about history. Okay, he's an anomaly now. He won't be an anomaly five years from now. There'll be more of him. And less of the people fighting him. That's the point. At some point, that's going to make a really big difference. Why? Because History for Atheists and people like Tim are only going to get more, apparent, more abundant. As atheism grew people are going to start becoming dissatisfied from within the atheist community with the, with the poor level of argumentation and the quality of their argumentation. Why? That's a given. Why? Because the arguments suck. So do Christian arguments. Yeah, but that's what, exactly why there are Christians here in the space trying to improve upon them. Okay? I'm not here reiterating every... You don't hear me making videos going, Kalam this, Kalam that, do you? No. But there's a lot of atheists, and this is why, this is why, you know, Pine Creek thought, noticed that I was focusing on him a lot over the last year and a half. Okay, there's a reason for that. He was the only idiosyncratic one. Of the up-and-coming, like, content creators, Pine Creek was the only innovator. If you take, like, Vice Rhino, you know, Prophet of Zod, Holy Kool-Aid, a whole bunch of those content creators, and you took the name off the title and you put just just had it in a random video, they'd be pretty much their arguments would be pretty much indistinguishable from each other and mostly irrelevant. Why? Because they're on the same page as Godless Lids. They're not quite they're not quite on the same page as God. There's there's they're intelligent people. I'm not accusing them of not being intelligent. But their arguments are all geared towards a certain type of Christian that isn't really here. Yeah, it might have been the type of Christianity that you were raised in, I'll give you that, that's probably true. But it's not the type of Christianity that actually exists here right in front of your face. Look at what they did last weekend. They went and protested the Ark, the, the, the Ark Museum. That's not relevant, guys. The only reason I even know that that Ark Museum exists. Think about this. This is a true fact. And think about how ironic this actually is. The only reason in the world I, the practicing Christian, know that that Ark Museum is, exists is because of the atheists. Other than that, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know at all. I'd have seen an article on it somewhere, read maybe five minutes of it and never thought about it again. Maybe if my wife were in town, if my wife and I, you know, were, I, where is it, Kentucky? Maybe we'd go visit it as a joke, as a lark, <laughs> ironically. 
this should be entertaining. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. It's not relevant to almost every Christian that you actually interact with in the here and now. Think of any Christian I can name, random from Randall Rouser to anybody, it's not relevant. None of them are young earth creationists. None. And I know almost all the Christians that you'd be interacting with. None of them. Maybe one or two. Actually, one or two are. But almost none. Okay, that's going to be an important problem for atheism in the, in the months and years to come. Why? You aren't really dealing with relevant aspects of the real conversation. Comparing God to Santa Claus is not an intelligent conversation. It's fine. You can have a dumb conversation about anything under the sun, but you can't turn around and high-five yourself for being the smart set and the great critical thinker at the same time. Tim O'Neill and his ilk only grow. Why? Because they're going to get annoyed. They're already there, and they're starting to become there in force. Atheists, agnostics, who are more, more in common with me, who are more of my house than they are of your house. When I was debating the quantum mechanics thing, okay, Stuart joined my side. Stuart's an agnostic. The things that I'm telling people about quantum mechanics are really obvious. Really obvious and they are scientific facts. So these are the same people who are the science this, science that crew who don't know jack diddly squat about science. Once they started rolling up on me, it was obvious that they didn't understand quantum mechanics at all conceptually. Why? Because what I've been telling you about quantum mechanics is that God's honest truth. There are only two, not to sidetrack into this, but just briefly, there are only two interpretations of quantum mechanics that keep materialism alive. Did you hear me? Only two. Bohmian mechanics or pilot wave and many worlds, both of which are false interpretations and they are case studies and motivated reasoning. The reason why I fixated on quantum mechanics is there isn't a lot of room for maneuvering. It's a real challenge to materialism and it was really obvious right from the dawn of the quantum era. Why? Because prior to measurement, the Schrodinger equation means that something is a wave. The particle is in a wave and a wave of probabilities. The particle exists as a wave of probability. A probability has not occurred yet. That's the clear implication of just the facts. And that's the part that trips everybody out. Which means to some degree, the real material world isn't actually there. Probability hasn't occurred yet. Probabilistic outcome of a measurement that hasn't been taken mean that the measurement isn't actually there to some degree. What does that actually mean? We don't know. That's where philosophy has to come in and reconcile that fact. But there are only two possible interpretations of quantum mechanics. Two. That keep materialism in play. This is why I kept saying, saying the guys were accusing me of not understanding quantum mechanics and I was only, I only care about quantum mechanics in one key area. How it defeats materialism, what it has to say about materialism. It defeats it. Why? Because there are only two possible interpretations. And remember the Schrodinger equation is precise. This mathematics is precise. There aren't 50 different ways of interpreting the data that reconcile to materialism. There are only two. Bohmian mechanics, pilot wave, and many worlds both of which eliminate the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. Other than that, the probabilistic nature holds, which means to some degree the real material world isn't actually there yet. It's what it means. And what that actually means philosophically, don't know. But that's what it actually means. That's why I have so much respect for Carlo Rovelli. Why? Because he has turned to philosophy. He has started studying Buddhism, a religion, why? To train his mind, this is his words, his own words, to train his mind to think differently so that he can understand the actual facts of the matter and come to a real understanding of what is going on philosophically speaking. The first 50 to 100 years of quantum mechanics, Sean Carroll and, the guy, and another guy who I listened to a podcast on, you know, had a really interesting conversation about this and they both kind of, you know, were upset about the fact that basically what, what physicists did was put the question on hold for 50 to 100 years. What it means on hold. That's what the Copenhagen interpretation basically is. Yeah, we, we don't understand this, but just run the equations. The equations work. And that's fine. Both Sean Carroll and the other guy, I forget what his name is, David Watson, I think. Really good book, by the way, What is Real on Quantum Mechanics. Really good book on Quantum Mechanics. Another, another good person to listen to. 
So they just put the question on hold. That's what the physicists did, which is fine to a certain degree. But the question had clear implications for materialism right from, from the outset. It seems to imply that the real material world isn't actually there, and what does that actually mean? But that's what it clearly seems to imply. And there are only two possible interpretations that reconcile quantum, the findings of quantum mechanics, the actual physics, to materialism. And that is Bohmian mechanics, pilot wave, which sounds like exactly what it is, hidden variables, quote-unquote, mysterious entities that we can't see or don't know or have no proof for, remove the probabilistic part of the equation. Why? Because they guide the, the particle through the wave function to its final outcome. So it's not probabilistic at all. That's what pilot wave actually means. And many worlds means that this one material world that I am standing in has standalone ontology. It is terra firma. It's why Sean Carroll favors it, because you get to keep materialism alive. It obeys all the laws of materialism as we commonly understood it. And the measurement that gets taken in this particular material world, the cat is alive. Hallelujah. That's one outcome. It's fixed. It's determined. There's no probabilities. Hallelujah. The only problem is we still have to count for Schrodinger's wave. <laughs> That's a pretty big problem, which means there's another world right next to me. It's a carbon copy version of this world where the cat is dead. <laughs> where the measurement is a different outcome. <laughs> I swear to God that's what many worlds is, and I swear to God that that is insane. That's it. So if you're a materialist listening to me, you know, woe unto you in your house. Why? Because those are your only two options. And those options suck. <laughs> those options suck. There is no other option on the table in interpretations of quantum mechanics that keep materialism alive. That's it. That's your weak sauce. You can hold on to materialism desperately if you want to for another three years, but then materialism is going to disappear as a possible alternative. Why? Because even Sean Carroll will eventually yield. Many worlds interpretation is utterly and completely ludicrous. It's basically crazy talk. You think, you know, young earth creation is crazy talk. Many worlds is just as crazy. So, the dichotomy is real, guys, and it only ends one way. There aren't going to be less Tim O'Neill's five years from now. There are going to be more Tim O'Neill's. There aren't going to be less EMs. There aren't going to be less Ben Watkins. Ben Watkins is one of their key nemesises. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of it is being expressed over the debate over the lactiest term. And again, all those people in that thread who are arguing that it's a perfectly legitimate argument against Christianity to compare it to Santa Claus, that's a perfectly legitimate argument. That's what they're saying. Me take something that you actually believe in, that is the bread and butter of your life, that's the cornerstone of your existence, and compare it to something that everybody knows it's false, and pretend like that's a real argument when it isn't. It's just, a, you know, it's a sidestepping a real argument. That's all it's doing. That's all it's doing. You can pretend it's a real argument and it isn't. It's not. It's not even close. It's not even close to even, I don't e what it says is, I don't even really want to think about this topic. I don't have to. Why? Because it's so outlandish and dumb and everybody knows that and all smart people know that. By the way, I'm the smart side. <laughs> By the way, I'm a great critical thinker. That's what it says. That's what it does. That's basically all of Godless Liz's arguments in a nutshell on Twitter. The reason why she's getting away with this is because she's kind of smart. She's clever. <laughs> she's clever comebacks. And she's, you know, she's got kind of like fun in your face personality to a certain degree. All right, fine. All right, fine. Shut up, fine, Craig. All right, fine. All right, fine. Calm down. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't really watched her that much. That's just a halfway educated guess. Why? Because her tweets seem to be popular and she's causing a stir, and my guess is the stir is that she's good at the comebacks. You can have fun being that kind of a not really thinking about it atheist for a while, but eventually the dichotomy is going to come and bite you in the butt. Why? Because the paradox is too obvious. That's not an intelligent take on Christianity or any religion at all. And ultimately, what I just told you about quantum mechanics is the God's honest truth that we can hold everybody in the atheist community accountable to what I just told you. The arguments that I'm bringing up in my videos about idealism versus materialism are really, really, truly important to the space. Most of the videos being done by your content creators are irrelevant. Irrelevant. They think they're relevant now because they're only having one dialogue, and that's with fundamentalist Christianity. Okay, well, not very many of us are fundamentalist guys. The conversation is old. The atheist, atheism will change. That's a given. It will change. And it will trend in the direction of the philosophical atheist, 
the more nuanced thinkers. And there's no other way it can possibly go. There's no other way I foresee it possibly going. It's because there are going to be more of them to come, not less. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I said it in other videos, I'll go into it again. The, the, the well-placed pejorative is going to be the thing that does them in more than anything else. When someone like a, a high-level content creator like Apollo Gia goes to make his video, okay, there are organic insults that are starting to bubble up from the community to describe that particular type of atheist. One of the ones I've used is Debate Me Bro Clowns. Another good one is the fallacy this, fallacy that crew. Fallacy this, fallacy that. That's the four horsemen fallacy. You can't use that. <laughs> that's, the, that, that's another good one. And then the other really good one is going to be uh, the science this, science that gang who don't know jack squat about science. Okay, those dichotomies can't last forever. Why? Because they're embarrassing to other atheists. You can't call yourself the scientific science, scientific science that community. I mean, Aaron Ross is the perfect example. Apparently his arguments on Noah's Ark and evolution or something are halfway decent or biology or something like that. But he doesn't know jack squat about philosophy of mind. He had P Patricia Churchland on his channel. The main, like, eliminative materialist. The main, one of the main people of the illusionist school or the physicalist paradigm of philosophy of mind. He barely even knew what questions to ask her. The fact that he has 300,000 subscribers is, a, is, is should be a, already a great discredit to the atheist community. Why? It shows you're not critical thinkers at all. Why? Because his take on religion has been pretty much dumb the entire time. And you don't care. And you don't, and intellectual integrity at some point is going to demand better of you. You either notice that some of the people in your community are making really poor arguments. <laughs> you either notice it or you don't. If you don't notice it, you don't want to see it. Don't tell me you're a great critical thinker then. Why? Because it's really obvious. The only innovative one was Pine Creek Doug. That's why I fixated on him. He was the only one doing something different. That's it. Other than that, you know, same old, same old. And that same old, same old isn't going to keep carrying the day moving forward. It's just, it's just not. It's not intellectually substantive enough. It's really honest to God not. It's not. You know, the, the arguments that I'm going to start bringing to the table are, are going to be based off of the actual physics that you, almost nobody in the atheist community knows. Jeffrey Williams knows. That's it. <laughs> Almost nobody else knows. <laughs> I swear to God, nobody, nobody who rolled up on me as, as a physics upper expert knew at all what they were talking about. They didn't understand quantum mechanics at all, conceptually at all, even a little. That was really obvious, like really, really painfully obvious. You know, and you know, Travis posted the twenty arguments for God to one of these guys who said there's no evidence for God. He didn't even glance over it. He didn't even give it a second look. He couldn't list those 20 arguments for God. Okay, that's going to start to, that, you know, that's going to start to catch up with people. <laughs> it's, it's not going to keep being okay. Oh, okay, you don't know any of the arguments for God, but you just keep talking and, you know, there's no evidence. But you can't tell me what those 20 arguments are. Those arguments can be refined and polished up. Some of them are a lot more substantive than, than atheists want to admit. Smart atheists don't will admit it. Because they understand the arguments, and they've been, they read them too. And they'll, they can tell you the 20 arguments, some of them better than I can. That's what I'm saying. The philosophical atheists are the only ones who are going to be left standing. Why? Because that's the only way this trends. It's the only way this trends, guys. It's the only, there's no other possible outcome. There is no other possible outcome. You know, the truth is there to be understood. There, there, the... You know, it's kind of think of it this way, okay? If I were making, our, if I were making videos that were just kalam, you know, just, that were just reiterations of the arguments for God, you would eventually notice that those that the, those videos would be irrelevant, right? If you're an atheist, think of what I just said. I, I know I said that poor. <laughs> you said that really poor, Greg. All right, I understand that. But just understand what I'm trying to be. If my videos were only me reiterating the shopworn arguments for God, and if you're a Christian, relax, you know, I just think they need to be improved and there, there are elements in them that are strong and, and, and convincing. But they, can't, they do not get us 
over the finish line as framed. They need to be reworked, innovated, polished up, and strengthened. But if I were just making videos that were reiterations of the arguments for God, you'd eventually stop watching the videos and go, what Craig Reed is saying is irrelevant. Okay, that's what's going on in a huge chunk of the atheist community as we speak. They are making shop-worn, reiterative arguments that aren't very strong or convincing or real. They're only convincing to people who have recently started to question their fundamentals Christianity. That's it. That's the only, the only target audience. Other than that, they aren't good enough for the people who've been doing this for a while and actually have integrity and actual intelligence. They aren't good enough. That's the point. They aren't even close to good enough. And eventually that dichotomy is going to catch up with you. It has to. Why? Intellectual integrity demands it. This is a public space after all. Accountability is coming to each and every one of us. Every single solitary thing I say in my video, I can be held account to. That's why I, stop, I don't make speculative arguments in my video. I try to polish them up to the point where I'm dealing with just the facts. And then if I get challenged on those facts, I go back and readdress, which I'm going to do with the like, you know, I got some pushback on my, uh, I'll say this and then I'll wrap it up. I know I'm rambling. <laughs> you always ramble, okay? I understand that. I'll say this and I'll wrap it up. Just relax. Relax. It's better content than you got in any other video you can listen to in the last three months. I promise you, this is way more on point. Even my rambling is more on point than most of the stuff out there. So, relax. <laughs> my rambling is a hundred times more on point. The stuff I'm saying is coming, guys. The stuff I'm telling you is coming, is coming. The arguments that I've been talking about in my videos haven't hit the space yet. They will hit the space within three years. I'm talking about things that haven't actually arrived here yet. But they will. I'm telling you the beginning rumblings of them. And those rumblings are going to produce big, huge ships. And at some point soon I'll make predictions of what those ships will be. But, uh, anyways... So, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you know, what I said, what I, what I would say all the time. Um, so, there you have it, kids. A little rambling and all over the place as per the usual, but, you know, in my ramblings, there are some really, really solid insights go as to what time it actually is and what time is to come. And that's going to be the key. Some of the stuff I'm telling you hasn't fully happened yet. But the things that I'm talking about now are going to be really important two and a half, three years from now. And then once people start getting hip to the fact that I've been telling you what time it is before it actually occurred, then people are going to go, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. He was right way back then. Yep. That's what's going to happen. That's how I see it going down. I don't see any other way. The, 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 the tension between the philosophical atheists and the debate me bro types only exacerbates. And it only ends in favor of the philosophical atheists. There's no other way it can go. Godless Liz is, is a perfect cutoff point. Why? Because she's way smart enough. She's way smart enough to have a nuanced, intelligent take on Christianity. She just doesn't want to. She doesn't. Which I get, you know, some fun being a smart aleck. Okay, but ultimately we can hold the entire community accountable. Why? Because it ain't that big of a community, guys. Every name I mention, everybody knows. Every name I mention, most of you have interacted with. It's not that big of a community, which means, you know, I get a little bit bigger of an audience and I can freaking change the whole thing and rewrite this entire community by myself. You can't put Craig in the corner forever. <laughs> Nobody puts Craig in a corner. <laughs> Nobody puts Craig Reed in a corner. You can't keep Craig Reed in a corner forever. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to break out. At some point, my voice is going to be heard. And people are going to listen to me, darn it. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> I really did. Yeah, I really honestly thought that was funny. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. But I, I got a kick out of that one. All right, so anyways. There you have it, kids. A little rambly. A little all over the place as per the usual. But <laughs> some solidly good points. I got to tell you. Some gold, some gold buried in this rambly pile of, <laughs> of verbi verbiage. There's gold buried in here. You just got to dig it out. So, there you have it, kids. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.